guys so welcome back hope you guys are feeling good is the quran the word of god so the quran and this is what distinguishes the quran in many ways uh from other scriptures so as muslims we do believe that god has sent divine revelation prior we believe that the original scriptures prior to the multiple versions and the changes and revisions throughout history the original scriptures that were given to the prophets whether it was the torah uh, to moses or the gospels were all original divine revelations but they've been changed over time the quran is the word of god with a promise that he will guard it for all of time and it's probably one of the greatest miracles because in 1400 years we have the quran preserved through oral transmission and through written transmission and there are almost two billion muslims in the world and they all recite this book the exact same way and there's only one version of it and so when i'm reciting the quran if i say u or e or a differently an ethiopian muslim a chinese muslim a yemeni muslim can correct me an eight-year-old kid in any one of those countries can correct me because they will know that this is not how it's memorized and so it was memorized from the start committed to memory in the time of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and uh, preserved in writing and passed down and memorized by millions and millions of people around the world uh, and it's 600 pages and you can't go to a city in America, a city in the United States of America, and not find at least one person or a group of people that memorize it, uh, that have committed it to memory. And so there's an emphasis on committing it to memory, as well as understanding it and applying it and practicing it uh, as much as we can. What are some maybe deep or insightful differences between the Quran, the Torah, and the Bible? Well, like I said, so so you've got the original revelations of those scriptures, but there are so many versions of those scriptures, and there are times throughout history where sure. there have been changes just from an objective perspective, right? Uh, what is the original scripture that was given to uh, Moses, peace be upon him, and what was it initially communicated to Jesus, peace be upon him? Those things... Um, have changed over time however there's still some truth that remains even in those scriptures and so there are still things that line up especially with the old testament and islam there are still many things that line up between the two the bible as well the new testament now matthew mark luke and john it's it's different because these are not uh original scriptures these are testimonies that were obviously collected around the entire phenomenon of the coming of christ but the authors themselves the biographies the documentation even of those original testimonies and gospels what made the cut in terms of being included within the gospels and what didn't because there are many gospels at the time in that sense is different from what we believe was scripture communicated to jesus peace be upon him uh, the quran is different in several ways but it confirms uh, what came before it, but it's the documented and preserved word of God to be recited throughout throughout time. So it confirms much of what came before it, uh, and it resides amongst us and within us uh, for, the, for the rest of time. And through it, we honor uh, those revelations that came through the prophets of old, because the essence, the core of what came through those revelations is preserved in the Quran and with us. And I tell people this all the time that, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, introduced uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, and uh, even Moses, peace be upon him, to much of the world. There are Muslims around the world that are named Isa, that are named Jesus. There are Muslims around the world that are named Ibrahim, Abraham, Muslims around the world named Musa. And they learned of these figures through the revelation that came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Nuh, Noah, uh, Maryam, one of the most popular names in Islam, Mary, uh, peace be upon her, whole chapter in the Quran named after uh, Maryam, which is actually what I was reciting uh, in the prayer, was the chapter of Maryam, the chapter of the story of Mary, peace be upon her. So the Quran contains the stories, it contains um, 
legislation and law, but primarily it was revealed over 23 years. So it actually was coming in accordance with some of the events that were unfolding in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The first 13 years of that was primarily belief in God, uh, belief in the hereafter, and things that surrounded the core creed of Islam. And then legislation, law, stories of the prophets uh, came down in accordance with the unfolding events as well as prophesizing some of the things that were to come and speaking about some of the things that had just happened. And it is completed in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, memorized and then communicated to generation after generation after generation so that we have it in its pristine fashions. And now billions of people yeah. just <laughs> all across the world, all the different cultures, all mer memorizing the same words. Wow. Interesting, guys. Like he said, the Quran is the word of God. Why did he say so? Because as long as people can recite it, people can you know, digest it, so it's the, it's the word of God. And the biggest proof is the fact that anywhere you go to and you find a Muslim, at least there will be somebody that can recite the Quran. That's a proof that is the word of God. So it just gave, it gave, it gave us an explanation of Quran being the word of God, and it gave us the differences between the Bible, Quran, and the Torah. You know, then it also spoke about how Quran and Prophet Muhammad, you know, align together. Like what brought about the Quran and Prophet Muhammad's work, and why you know Prophet Muhammad is related or is connected to the Quran more and this was really beautiful and, and you can see that <laughs> the amazing part of it is the fact that average Muslim can actually recite the Quran that's the amazing part of you of one being a Muslim the fact that you don't only know how to know the verses but you know how to recite recite it memorize them and you know that will help you to understand more about the Quran, about Allah, about Prophet Muhammad and this was really amazing. I enjoyed this explanation. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.